Hey everybody, and welcome to Authors and Dragons, where a group of comedic fantasy writers get together and try to make it through a whole game of Pathfinder without accidentally dying. Let's see if we pull it off this week. As always, the odds do not look great. Hi, I'm John Harkness, and I will be playing the role of Fandingo the Fantastical, the baddest-ass bard you've ever... Well, okay, not really, he's a bard. But anyway, uh, in pseudo-real life, I'm the author of the Black Knight Chronicles urban fantasy series from Bellbridge Books, the Bubba the Monster Hunter series of self-published short stories, and a bunch of other stuff. Hi, I'm Joseph Rassi. I uh, play the role of Bjorn Bjornsson, Enthusiastic Barbarian. Uh, I was an author on the Mongoliad Project, and I write a whole bunch of other stuff. Hi, I'm Rick Walteri, and I play Silas Kane, Mighty Paladin of Toreg. And in real life, I write Bigfoot Hunters and the Tome of Bill, um, including Bill the Vampire and Shining Fury, which is uh, releasing April 29th. Hello, my name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter. In real life, I write the comic fantasy series of novels and short stories, Caverns and Creatures, beginning with the book Critical Failures. Hi, my name is Rob Bruzy, and I play uh, Cutharic the Lost, a grumpy and unpleasant uh, dwarven cleric. And in real life, I am the author of the Mercury series of books, including Mercury Falls, Mercury Rises, uh, a few others. And the latest one is called Mercury Shrugs. That's just coming out in uh, a couple weeks here. Hi, my name's Steve Weverell. I play Brandon Fymaster, Monk, and Meat Shield. In real life, I am the author of the comedy fantasy series, The Doomsayer Journeys. And I am Drew Hayes, the GM. I am the writer of the NPC series, Fred the Vampire Accountant, Superpowered, and the recently released Superpowered spinoff, Corpies. And if you would like to tell me how much you like and or hate my books, I will be at Comic Palooza, which runs from June 17th to 19th in Houston, Texas. And when last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had begun throwing up over the side of the boat they were on, because they are not accustomed to sailing, and they decided the best way to handle getting on their first boat was to drink heavily beforehand. Their spewy chunks of campfire food and poorly made tavern fare managed to attract the local animals, and by that I of course mean the sea bears. And when we left off, the gurgling, churning sea had spat three of the monsters atop the deck. So I'd like you all to roll a mission, please. All right. All right. While we're doing that, um, maybe you could explain what a sea bear is. Oh, well, look at that. I see the picture, but for the, uh, <laughs> for the audience. A sea bear is an ursine-like creature, very bear-shaped, but it is uh, composed of water. <laughs> Predominantly, it also has some silt, some coral. There are solid bits to it, uh, but it is akin to a water elemental, though not entirely liquid, and akin to a bear, but not obviously entirely a bear. Thus, they were called the sea bears, bears of the sea. <laughs> bears of the sea. We should can that? them. Yeah, <laughs> chicken of the sea and shit bear. on this. <laughs> Your rolls a thirteen. Si unconscious, unconscious Silas rolls a 14. Fandingo rolls a 16. <clears throat> Klaus oh, Richter okay. rolls 25. Jesus Christ. Klaus is initiative as fuck. He is super ready for both bears and water. <laughs> yes, that's right. Dark rolls a 21. Dark rolls How a natural roll 20 that is a 21. Correct. He's on his toes. He feels yeah. a lot better after chunking up all that stuff. Kutharik was throwing up early and got got that all done with, so he was ahead of the ahead of the game. If they're made of water, they can't set your beard on fire. That's right. They look soothing to me. I could dip my beard into one of them. Brandon Firemaster rolls a twenty. Rolls a twenty. All right. And the sea bears roll a respectable ten, except that in this case it makes means they go last. All right. With those initiatives, it means Klaus goes first. There is two on the lower deck and one on the upper deck. The crew has fled. You are dealing with this problem. Yeah, that's about time to foot stool. We will make him pay eventually. Footstool ran away so right. fast, there's a small footstool shaped cloud still in his image. <laughs> do we know anything about sea bears? Is there, can we do a, a, can we de determine if like ordinary weapons are gonna damage them or anything? Um, sure, that will be a knowledge. Sea bears. Sea bears. It's a very specific 
Um, oh, well, I will give you I will give you knowledge nature or knowledge uh, no just knowledge nature. Knowledge nature. Let's see if I've got any of that. Bendigo knows all kinds of shit about nature, baby. With a twenty-three. Oh yeah, you can beat me. I got a twenty-two. I have no knowledge nature. Fendigo got a natural twenty-three. Klaus got a three. <laughs> <laughs> Klaus is pretty wrong. sure sea bears are good <laughs> eating. <laughs> and Bingo like, knows everything there is I, to know about sea bears. I can't wait to burn the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Their skins like, are worth it's too, millions of gold. His two, his two biggest fears have just sort of collided <laughs> into one being, and his mind is just shorted out. Entirely. He's just standing there going, Sea bears? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will give Kuthric and Fandango that uh, they are known for uh, similar to mermaids. They like to try and drown their victims, although they do have bits of coral that allow them to strike with their, uh, like, in the fashion of claws. Um, they are resistant to most forms of physical damage, but with his 23, Fandango knows that they are, they can be, uh, Weakened normally by bludgeoning weapons, because it just bashes the water and the silt right out of them. Whereas piercing and slashing tends to just sort of move the water about within them. Kutharik is going to bash the silt out of one of these guys. Bash well, the yeah. I don't think many of you have Let multiple weapon you. options in the first place, so... <laughs> yeah, I've got a, I've got a mace, so that should bash. That's bashing. The silt bashing, right. if I ever... The mast I'm standing next to, is there like a crow's nest? There is that. at the very top of it. You'd have to scale around 40 feet straight up. But I have a crossbow. That's, you that's do a have a crossbow. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fire my crossbow up toward the, um, the the crow's nest. Roll me a ranged attack. Here we go. Ranged Crit attack. Crow's nest. <laughs> All right, attack 10. Well, that is all it takes to hit a stationary crow's nest, sir. You, uh... Sweet. You snap your your crossbow out, you take one look around, you're like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> and you, uh... <laughs> you straight Batman, that bitch. <laughs> um, That's right. <laughs> after the attack, I'll say that using the lever and pulley system built onto it, you can go up at a rate of half speed. You're, yeah. you're human, yeah. right? You're a medium-sized creature? Right. Yeah, then your base speed is 30. So yeah. So you can go up 15 feet per uh per action, and you still have a move left if you'd like to start fucking right off. I would like to start fucking right off. <laughs> all right, you all see Klaus pull his new toy out and immediately abandon you all. I'm not abandoning. I'm getting at a strategic location to fight. <laughs> From which to fire piercing weapons that don't hurt water bears. I rolled a three on knowledge of fucking sea bears. <laughs> <laughs> so... All he knows about sea bears. Right off. Um, <laughs> and for the rest of you who are going to actually fight the fucking sea bears, use a big stick. Don't we no got pointy thing. There are oars on this boat, are there not? I asked about oar holes last time, and nobody could give me a straight answer. Yeah, we did. We <laughs> told you there were uh, there were none, and even Footstool told you they had enchanted sails. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No one was oars. really listening to Footstool. I found like the title. He knows. Of school he knows. The sea bear now, but he's gone. Yeah. So now yeah. the episode of Klaus versus the Tardigrades. So uh, <laughs> with Klaus up in the air, dangling himself like delicious, delicious Klaus meat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is Kutharik the Lost's turn. Uh, Kutharik is going to yell something to the effect of <laughs> "Use bludgeoning weapons. Use use a, an oar if you can find one." And then he is going to. Uh, Really don't want to attack, but I guess I'm probably gonna kind of have to. All right, Cathark is gonna try to gonna move toward the 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 one bear that's closest to him, uh, and uh, over top of that that hatch or whatever, because he doesn't particularly want to be near the edge of the ship. Cathark attacks the approaches the middle sea bear, and I assume he's gonna attack uh, it. Fine. Yeah, he's gonna attack. All right. Cathark almost never attacks, so this is a new thing for him. He's, this is probably going to be his one attack, and then he's going to run. <laughs> True to form. <laughs> True to form. Run and heal. Hey, at People. least you did one, uh, unlike Klaus. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Uh, he gets an 11 for an attack. 
Uh, that is not enough. You you swing at the at the sea bear, and it, it's very wobbly, and it just sort of moves out of the way. Well, that's it for me, guys. Good luck. Brandon Thighmaster, can you show these guys how it's done? Time to swap the fucking deck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move. Um, uh, I'm gonna move onto the upper side of the bear near Kufarik. Okay. If that is uh, allowed with my movement. Um, yeah, you got plenty. And yeah, I'm gonna attack the bear to my left with the broom of doom. All right. Yeah. Flurry of blows. Okay. Uh, yeah, flurry of blows. Why not? That's uh. Wait, did you say you're using the broom? I thought flurry of blows was barehanded. No. No, no you I can, can use it with the broom. Oh, so cool. Brand- yeah. Brandon Thymaster and the Broom of Doom is the name for our new Harry Potter series. <laughs> <laughs> It's the name for a new brand of Thigh Master series. Harry Potter slash pick. Blow that bear. <laughs> ah, not just flurry of blows. Ah, she blows. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, crap. All right. <laughs> uh, you hit for a five and a twenty, respectively. Uh, the five does not hit. So the I, I'm going to let you pick right now. Which, when you when you swing your, your quarter staff, I'm assuming you're like twirling it around. So you're hitting him with both sides. So... First, is the first or the second attack always considered to be the bristles? The second attack is the bristles. The bristles was the follow-up. All right. So the 20 hits, and you, you do, you do manage to strike him pretty well, and then you notice that as you, uh, as you're bringing your broom on the follow-through, you actually seem to pull some extra water with him. Almost as though you, uh, the good bristles did, did a little extra. He's, he's still there, but, uh, there, there's less of him. Oh, the good bristles. Nice. Fandingo the Fantastical. Fandingo will... Okay, the only thing is plus. Fandingo will cast Ear Piercing Scream at the bear that the other guys have been hitting. Okay. What does that do? Um, I unleash a powerful scream, inaudible to all but a single target. The target is dazed for one round and picks 1d6 points of sonic damage per two caster levels. A successful save negates the day's effect and halves the damage. Ah, with a ten! He does not make it! Roll your damage, sir. So I've dazed the bear. You've dazed the sea bear! The mighty sea bear! Dazed the sea bear. And then Bingo does a one point damage. You've mildly discomforted the sea bear! You've sent a few (laughs) ripples through it. I, I dazed the sea bear. Well done, Fendinger. Would you like to move, or are you happy with your screech? I'm good. Alrighty. I'm good. The bear's way over there, and he's kind of dizzy. Silas Kane, as your friends are currently battling overhead, roll me a fortitude save to raise yourself from the slumber <laughs> of, uh, of effect of all that magic you had to be a vent, uh, vessel for. You guys, they can see me for the rest of the, for the rest of the night here. <laughs> I'll tell you up front, it's a DC 10. DC 10 fortitude to wake up. Oh, oh Silas was an eleven. Eleven. You snap yourself awake, and you you come to from beneath the deck just in time to realize that you're moving, but you're not the one moving. <laughs> and then you look down, and you realize that the crew is carrying you uh, on their their small hands. There's like ten of them, and just as you realize this, they chunk you out the door and lock it behind you. <sighs> and you hear a goblin <laughs> voice say, "Good luck. Don't die, please." <laughs> oh, it's What's going on? I, I just had the weirdest dream. There was, there was this woman kneeling in front of me, seeking salvation. But every time she, every time she opened her mouth to pray, little Toreg would slap her in the face. <laughs> I'm on a boat, bitch. I will give you one action, oh, Silas. Standard or move, your call. Well, like, I, I guess probably this movie's gonna stand up. Fair enough. You stand up and notice that there are two sea bears directly in front of you. Roll me a perception to see if you notice the third, since you weren't there for the very loud arrival, and there's a wall to your back. I think I like the other dream better. <laughs> <laughs> Silas rolls a natural 20, 18. Silas is very aware of the sea bear uh, over at the at the top of the deck, and uh, as well as everything else going on in the boat. He, he snaps too real quick. All right. If you don't have some of those big punching bag arrows, don't shoot the bears. Silas is closing his eyes going, let the praying woman come back, let the praying woman come back. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so, uh, please wake up. Please it's wake been up. a long fight. So, uh, quick question. Um, can Bjorg use the flat of his blade as a bludgeoning weapon? Uh, I will allow that because it is it's technically possible, but because it is not designed to be swung that way, um, you're going to take a negative three on your attack rolls. All right, that's, that's all right. Uh, so let me adjust the numbers here. Um, all right. So Bjorg is going into rage. Uh, he's gonna and he's gonna make right for uh over here. Uh, just to Cutharix, just to uh Cutharic's left, and he's going to pull out his sword and basically swing with the flat at the. Back to the ocean with you, bear mother thing. Bjorg rolls a twenty-three. I think he's thankful. That's with the minus right. three. Yeah. Oh my God. It was plus 12. He was charging. Bjorg hits like a hammer. He spanked his bare ass. All right. Uh, and Bjorg rolls a 14. 14 uh-huh. damage. 14 damage. Bjorg runs up, swings, and he just parts the water with the flat of his blade, hits it right in the center coral, cracks it, and sends it flying into the air, where it splats ineffectually into the ocean. <laughs> Is fucking Moses. <laughs> this is kind of like how my dream with the woman ended. This <laughs> little Torex gets quarreled and you have bigger problems now. <laughs> oh. Okay. I will start a new religion. Let my people go! With, uh, with the first uh, sea bear down, that leaves two. Two remaining. Uh, so I guess this one is just going to run up and charge Brandon Thymaster, since he is the closest. And this one is going to, uh, you see it run up and you see it attack the steering wheel. Stupid bears. <laughs> so, yeah. first, uh, these are the attacks on Brandon. Oh, what's your AC, Brandon? Oh dear. He's, uh, uh let me check. AC is 16. Oh, he hit twice. So he that's did. 10 damage. Uh, actually, that one's a critical hit, so he rolls again to confirm. So, he confirms. So, that would oh, be shit. 14 damage to Brandon. Okay. Brandon's uh, still standing. Actually, alright, cool. I'm at, I'm at one. One uh, hit point. You're at one. Okay, well, unfortunately, when he succeeds on both attacks, he has a follow-up. Oh, um, shit. And so, uh, basically, you are going to make opposed strength checks with him. Oh. Uh, as he uh, as he hits you with both, <laughs> and then tries to envelop you to pull you into his watery body to start drowning you. So roll a strength oh, check. You. Pull, pull him into your oily people. body. <laughs> 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 it's water versus oil, and they don't mix. <laughs> Look, but don't touch, sea bear. <laughs> <laughs> it has to have bread and thigh mess. Oh! Touch. Oh, man, no. <laughs> oh, he let me down. So he, uh, you guys see the bear just smack the Christ out of Brandon, and then sploosh as it lands on top of him and uh, and pulls him in. I told him to wear a shirt. I knew something like this was gonna happen. I, I have a thing. But the good news, an air bladder. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is you don't actually take uh, damage. Okay, this but... one, that was just the roll to hook you in. So you are still conscious until your next round. Just a uh, logistical question. I bought because everybody uh, got drowned so much earlier in the game. When I was shopping, I bought a thing called an air bladder. Can that be used within a sea bear? What is an air bladder? <laughs> uh, I believe it's, it's a swimming aid that gives you an extra um, uh, turn against uh, not being drowned by a sea bear, maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so basically, what it's, it's doing is it says here. With sea bears. <laughs> it's trying to choke you out and I'll it's pummeling you with debris in its that body. That actually voids the warrant. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up. I'll get it up in the. Okay. Well, well you don't take damage this turn down. anyway. Uh, the other bear is going to attack the bejesus out of the uh, steering wheel. You all hear loud cracks and snaps as the bear rears back and starts like slapping the steering wheel hard. And you see splinters and chunks of wood flying. Uh, the steering wheel is still standing, but just barely. If, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Does this seem bad to anyone else? Neither Brandon nor that steering wheel look like they'll last another round. Towards so close, as well as the steering life. You are 15 <laughs> feet in the air. What would you like to do, Klaus? 
Crunch, 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 crunch. Both actions? Yes. All right. With both your actions, you climb all the way up, and you are now in the crow's nest. Awesome. Kutherick. No, no, no. Okay, sorry. I, yeah, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the one that, uh, that's got, that's got Brandon inside. All right. I'm, I'll probably hit Brandon. But... That is a possibility. Yes, the bear has 20% <laughs> cover. Uh, because of okay, Brandon fantastic. inside, there's a 20% chance that you'll hit the monk instead of the bear. If there's, if there's a possibility of Kutharic, of something going wrong for Kutharic, it will. So prepare for that. Shield yourself, Brandon, because I'm going to smack you in the head. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see. Crowning into sea bear, he's really not prepared for anything. Was that? <laughs> I don't think that was on his list of things to do today. You said you wanted to punch okay. one of every animal. Yeah. You yeah. punch him from the inside. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Heavy mace. Tharic, it's a... God damn it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tharic rolls a five for an attack, so I... Well, the good news is that doesn't break either the sea bear or Brandon's armor, so you don't have to worry about uh, hitting him. That's what I'm I'm good at. Silly to worry. Completely, you just, you just whiff completely. Like, and you can see Brandon inside sort of judging your form. Yeah, and I should... I'll, I'll, I'll save you, Brandon. <laughs> Next <laughs> round. I could have healed him, but I didn't. Instead, I, I made an ineffectual attack. All right, Brandon, uh, you have one hit point, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in this bear, on it, the start of its turn, you take automatic damage from the pummeling. Fair enough. So uh, if you would like to try and bust this out, you can do an opposed point. strength roll, or because you are a monk, if you have it trained, you can use Escape Artist. I do have Escape Artist. It would be a shame not to use it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll use Escape Artist. All right, he will roll against your escape artist, and he will try to keep you in with his raw power. The, the sea bear should take automatic damage. Like no, no sea bear can be a shirt to Brandon Thymaster. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, like light, <laughs> the sky darkens and lightning if nothing splits else, it. No, this is going to be a great story at, at escape artist club. Like everybody's going around and they're telling their escape artist stories, and you're like, yeah, well, I escaped from a sea bear. <laughs> well. It- I, I swam out through his liquid rectum. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a punk band. <laughs> liquid rectum. That sounds better when Brandon says it does. Everything just to uh, just to clarify on the air bladder, it contains enough air to sustain a medium creature for one round, provided I inflated it, which I didn't. <laughs> it's uh, that's okay. It's more, it's more the energy of the sea bear pummeling you anyway. So oh, roll your check, man. Right, and roll escape. Ooh. Hey, Brandon Feinmaster rolls a twenty-one, and the bear rolls a natural one. It fails. <laughs> Brandon Feinmaster flips around, kicks the coral, and sploosh. I'll even let you land upright and uh, and ready to go for your next round. That that was. Such an impressive movement. Nice. Escape the sea bear with finesse. Excellent. You just flexed your pecs and the, yeah. the entire thing just like, you know, blew up. And I, I do have to say, <laughs> in the afternoon sunlight with like the fresh coat of seawater upon him, Brandon Thymaster is positively glistening. <laughs> yeah, but do I get a little credit for the assist? Listening is tripping. <laughs> <laughs> noise, but you wave, you may set it in a vaguely threatening manner. I distracted the sea bear for you. That doesn't count for anything. He was like so focused on me that he was like, whoa, whoa, this guy inside of me is escaping. Just swam out my rectum. <laughs> no. Yeah. Boy, without context, no, 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 that is a no, really no. weird statement. Sea bear is sitting there. Sea bear is sitting there going, God, I gave birth to something beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> or it thinks it had the weirdest shit. <laughs> One of those. I have the weirdest boner right now. <laughs> It's Brandon Thymaster to Dude, you gotta check this out. <laughs> okay. okay. It's kind of like some story. So, Fandingo, it is your turn once more. Do we get a big X on the other bear? You, no one's killed another, another bear. bear. Oh, it's not dead. It just pooped out Brandon. Yeah, Brandon escaped <laughs> from its innards. He didn't do any damage. Fandingo's going to try his bardic performance on the bear, <laughs> and he's going to fascinate the bear that's eating the steering wheel. Sea shanty. <laughs> and a jig. Uh, what, what's the save? What it's do you roll? save. Oh, but 
This is one yes. willful bear. It's got the power of Davy Jones flowing through its well flow. So I'm just I'm just kind of playing and dancing and looking like a jackass. So after Klaus <laughs> fucked right off on you guys, uh, Fandingo whistles really loud and seems to make a bear ripple, and then just starts <laughs> don't, 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 rocking out. I'm doing the Macarena, motherfuckers. <laughs> All right. It's a strange uh, dream indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Silas, boxing glove arrows. Silas, it is your turn. Well, Silas sees that the bear up here is uh is happily chewing uh, chewing away, so it's a uh, you know, so it seems preoccupied. So not probably being uh being overly bright enough to like know what a boxing glove is, <laughs> or how to attach it <laughs> to an arrow. He'll uh, he'll shoot two at uh, at this at the bear that's uh, that just jumped off of Brandon. All right. Would you like to take like five feet over so you're not risking hitting Kuthrick? Nah. <laughs> not in this party. Torin will guide my arrow. Silas took the action. Right Silas here. took. All right. <laughs> all right. Give me give me two uh, at the bear. All right. First one. Uh, First attack is 17 and uh, 6 damage. The other one is 21 attack and 2 damage. Okay. The uh, the first arrow uh, flies uh, through the through the water and it seems to chip off a piece of the more central coral area. Uh, the second one also strikes. like This one strikes like dead in where the heart would be, but there's no heart, uh, and it just sort of whoosh, runs right through it, hitting nothing. Take that, water. <laughs> Bjorg. Uh, it is your turn. Bears to the top right. of you, bears uh, to the bottom. Start in the middle of your life. All right, so Bjorg is going to basically, I'm thinking he's he's probably sensible enough in his current state to realize that the steering wheel of a ship being destroyed is not a good thing. So he is going to, let's see, if I go full run, can I can I make it If you, I'll, there? I'll, I'll, let, yeah, you, I'll let you five foot over like that. And then you basically just run straight up. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, li- it's a little wonky, but you can have it. So you can do a charge. All right. Yeah, Bjorg is going to charge and basically flatter the blade at this thing again, uh, currently babbling in his madness. I can barely tolerate you! <laughs> you rolled 12. So that steering wheel was a friend of mine! <laughs> <laughs> All right, but with the in the rage and the and the pun and the power and the swing of a of a fam- unfamiliar feeling, you uh you just sort of whiff a little bit. The bear ducks to the side, and now now comes the relevant question, Jorg, one or two? Mm-hmm. Pick pick one or two. One or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, two. All right, on a two, the bear will attack you. On a one, the bear will continue to attack the steering wheel. Since you did no damage, it's a toss-up to see who draws its attention. Gotcha. Ooh, steering wheel. Oh, damn it. it! He might miss. All right. Uh, <laughs> Our and uh, on whether or not the monster can miss a stationary object. <laughs> the uh, Our fate banks on a die roll, which is much worse. I guess the bear over that had just spit out Brandon. Brandon jumped out to the side. It's still sort of processing the fact that he's gone, but Kuthrick is right in front of it. So, uh, yeah, Kuthrick will take the bear claws. Nice, uh, nice job getting his attention, Kuthrick. Well done. Yeah, you bet. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> first, uh, first round of attacks on Kuthrick. Oh, both are 21. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be shitting. <laughs> Shit balls. Oh, damn. Bear so, to be shitting you. <laughs> identical rolls just occurred. So 21 hitting for 5, 21 hitting for 5. Kuthrick, what's your AC? Kuthrick's AC is... Hang on. 15. 10 damage, sir. Woohoo! Oh, and because it hit on both, I need a strength check from uh, Kuthrick. Alright, strength check. I think it's about to dip itself soothingly into your beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so good. With Kutharic getting an 8 and the bear getting an 18, the bear pulls Kutharic in and uh, puts him in the water. You take no damage this round, but if you don't get out on your turn, you will take automatic damage of 4 on your on its next turn. Is the is the green thing hit points? Yes. Excellent. So I'm at 0. You're at 0. That means you are I conscious, uh, but limited. You can only take a single action per turn. Okay, cause yeah. there, is there something I can do to make myself go unconscious? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just roll naturally. I, I, I don't want to be aware. I don't want to be aware of being inside the bear. I want to. I want to be blissfully unconscious while I'm inside, inside the bear. Unfortunately, once you again, the gods have shown you no mercy, Kudrick. <laughs> <laughs> they left you wounded and just aware enough to experience the horror. Uh, perfect. You, you're getting a close up of its watery intestinal tract. <laughs> mm. And this uh, other bear will attack the steering wheel once more. And a 17 and an 18 will both hit. And the bear uh, just cracks the wheel clean off. Um, it seems to have done considerable damage to the, I don't know what the term is, for the part that the wheel attaches to. Um, but that part is still partially standing. Rudder. The wheel is uh, the wheel's gone. The wooden part holding it up is somewhat there. But it's, uh, it's not looking good either. Klaus, you are in the crow's <laughs> nest. You just get a ship without the belt. What? Klaus, it is your turn, and you are in the crow's nest. Oh, my, my turn. All right, I have a, I'm going to use my brain here. Um, I know that oil does not mix with water well, so I would like to know, can I dip some arrows in water? All right, can I dip an arrow and fire in the same turn? Uh, I guess if you use your move action to dip, yes. I'm not moving anywhere. I'm in the crow's nest. All right, I would like to dip an arrow and fire it at the uh, at the steering wheel bear, so as not to not risk killing Kutheret. Good call. Yes. Roll me that attack. Oh, here we go. Oh shit! Klaus rolls a thirteen. That is not enough to hit your uh, your bolt. Just sort of strikes the deck a few feet away. That's an, that's, that's an arrow. I'm using my bow now. Oh, sorry. Your arrow uh, strikes the uh, deck and quivers slightly and then like sort of falls over because it's dipped in oil so it's all slippery. Oh. Alright, well, next time. Gutherick, uh, okay, I, I'm gonna ask you. Do your spells have any verbal components? Oh, they do. Okay. I was gonna let you cast a healing spell in the bear as long as it didn't have verbal components. <laughs> but uh, it does. But it does. What, what about that other, what about that other healing spell that yeah, we What about channeling? Try? Yeah. I don't know so about channeling. channeling. Try that. Okay, so here is the deal. You can uh, channel, you can channel energy, but it's, but the limit is that, um, wow. so unless you take a feat called <laughs> Selective Channeling, you're going to hit everything in 30 feet of you. That includes the bear wow. that's holding you. But, on the other hand, Brandon's okay. taken a lot of damage, so it might be worth restoring what little Silas chipped away. I don't think we damaged this bear yet, have we? You have, actually. Silas has done that damage was... to it. Not not as much uh, as he would have with the bludgeoning, but he still did some damage. All right. And it'll affect me, too, right? It will affect you. And, and, and Brandon. And Brandon. I, I, am, I am being very forthright. It will affect... Uh, actually, it will affect everyone except Bjorg and Klaus and the uh, steering wheel bear. And Bjorg's at full hit points anyway. Yeah. Everyone's at full hit points okay. except the people right by uh, Kutherick. Okay, so I'm doing a channel energy to try to heal people, and I actually got a decent roll for once, and it's a four. All right, Kutherick, Brandon, and the bear that you are inside are all within the 30-foot burst and regain four hit points. Now, since that takes you up to four out of zero, you can take a move action, because you are no longer at zero and therefore limited to the single action. Would you like to try and break free of the bear? Nah, I'm good. (laughs) Wait, I was going to say that's wise Because doesn't the bear The bear's uh, uh, insides Do an automatic four points They will do uh, an automatic four points Since that's what he rolled But only at the start of his turn So this is his one chance to try and get out You can do strength Or if you have escape artist but, trained yeah. You can do escape artist Your, your call, Kudrick right, so If the bear this. attacks him It could do considerably more than four points it's true, but, but it has to hit him. But so could Silas if he it has to hit him me and hit the bear. It always fucking hits him. <laughs> <laughs> at, least be, at least I'll be drawing fire on the outside, though, right? Like I'm at least at least it's one last attack for somebody else. All right, all right. That I'm just throwing that out there. I, I love that the rogue is like, <laughs> "What if you just take a small beating rather than try and fight?" <laughs> we're saying, <laughs> we're saying that to the healer. Matter. I'm certainly not going to do that. I got a three. Kutharic rolls a three, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All these rolls are academic, Kutharic, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Kutharic rolls a natural one, 
and uh, therefore that very one. much fails to get out of the bear. <laughs> and climbs to like, actually crawls up further in, in the bear. bear. I'm even more inside it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> He like he grabs he grabs the coral to try and pull push himself free like Brandon did, but he gets his hand stuck and he's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> Starts panicking. Uh, this is rapidly this is rapidly turning into disaster porn. <laughs> this is rapidly turning into a flashback to the fucking well. <laughs> My stomach, hello, large intestine. Well, you guys whipped the shit out of that first bear like it was nothing, <laughs> and then <laughs> okay. Brandon Thymaster, it is your turn. The bear does have a uh, 20% cover from Kuthric. Uh, what is the possibility of saving Kuthric here? What is the possibility of diving into the bear and pushing Kuthric out? Uh, you can make, you can, since he's like, you know, the bear is big, but it's not that big. So you could make an opposed strength check of the bear to try and reach in, grab Kuthric, and pull him out. Um, and if you succeed, if you're stronger than the bear, you can pull Kuthrick out. If you fail by more than five, though, the bear's gonna pull you in. Well, I think and we all know that, if that that's what's If you are stronger than a bear... <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, knock the bear, slap the fuck out. Wow. Well, yeah, he's gonna try it for it. Yeah. He's gonna, is he gonna try attack, or is he gonna try to pull Kuthrick out? He's gonna try and pull Kuthrick out. Give me a strength check! <laughs> If you are stronger than a bear. Yeah, but that's... You can't play to the character, and he obviously believes he's stronger <laughs> than the bear. Yeah. All right, that's water. He's not, but he obviously <laughs> believes... <laughs> How it's much room like is, oh. in is in this bear? All right. Bread the bear... Rolled a 10. And the bear rolls a 12. So you fail to uh, save Kuthrik, but you are not pulled in. If you would like to take one attack, I won't let you do flurry, but you can have one strike on the bear and no movement. How about a stunning fist? Uh, I'll go ahead and let oh, you know. Yeah. As you look, you're like, all right, I'll punch you in the... Yeah, there, there's no there's no organs to stun on a sea bear. Yeah, uh, here's a long shot. I'll stun okay. him in the corner, you bastard. <laughs> okay, wild sweep attack, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Room of doom for 19. Oh, my God. Wow, that's really good. Um, That hits, and that would hit Kutharic as well. So I want you to pick a span of 20... And then roll me a D100. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, let's say 0 to 20. That sounds about our wheelhouse. All right. Uh, if you roll in that, you hit Kuthark that? instead. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep. Uh, roll a 70. Oh, man. Okay, so you swing those bristles through the bear, and you take so much of it. Like, you... Just kick the shit out of it with this. It is watery and flimsy and barely together. God damn it. Again! <laughs> <laughs> barely together. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it is, it is hanging on by a thread, but it is hanging on and is also hanging on to Kutharic. So, it is now Fendingo's turn. Give me back my dwarf. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna try to fascinate the steering wheel bear again because it's all instant. Alrighty. The steering wheel bear will roll its will save of 12, which is not enough. You have successfully fascinated the steering wheel bear. What, what song so are you playing to fascinate that's the bear? String. <laughs> Look, bear, it's a wheel. That's not this wheel. Tell me of your song, Fendigo, your song that is sung to sea bears. Oh shit, I can't, I can't try that bear again. Oh. Because he saved last turn, I can only try the, I can try the other bear. Okay, if you want to fascinate that one, we'll say that's what happened. Alright, I'll fascinate the other bear. I still want to know what song you're singing. Oh, I'm singing While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And then I'm going to bust out like fucking Prince on the guitar solo at the end. Alright. Silas. There is a slightly dazed-looking bear with a dwarf inside in front of you, and a <laughs> steering wheel-hating bear behind you. Uh, Kuthric, you know, my fellow dwarf is in trouble, so Silas will try to induce labor in the bear with an arrow or two. I'm <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure that with an arrow, you're only going to possibly hurt me and not the bear, but do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did some damage. Yeah, he did. Oh, did he? Embarrassing. Come on, Kutharic, have a little faith. Intorig! <laughs> <laughs> All 
First arrow misses. First is a 9, second is a 21 with 4 damage. Okay, moment of truth, pick a span of 20. I'm going to do the same thing as uh, Brandon Thighmaster and pick 1 to 20. Okay. And let's see here. Here we go. 92. Woo! The Silas whiffs bad with that first arrow, but the second plunges uh, into the weakened form of the bear, striking its coral center and shattering it straight apart as it collapses into a pool of nothingness and very soaking wet dwarf. Oh yeah, Silas is holding this over your head for a while. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) He just killed a sea bear with an arrow. (laughs) Actually, to be fair, Brandon had that thing down to one hit point with a single sweep. (laughs) All over him. Well, he got the good bristles. All right, Bajorg. The the steering wheel's already in deep shit. Can you save even the the last chunk of it? Uh, all right. All right. Let's see here. <sighs> all right. Bjorg is gonna wheel back with his uh, flat of the blade again, and basically in his rage induced state, he's gonna I will kill you with my bare hands if I must. That rolls eleven. <laughs> so no ship saving today. So Bjorg rolls an eleven. Dice have failed him. He's looking very confused at this point. He's he's starting to become very convinced that basically uh, his his sword only works at all when he uses the edge. <laughs> Except for that first bear that you just destroyed. <laughs> this, no, this doesn't happen most of the time. All right. Uh, yeah, she's never heard that before. What one or two? <laughs> one or two, Bjorg. Uh, uh, two. You know we we'll go two. That was last time. Two again. All right. If it's a two, then the bear will us. will attack you. If not, it's going to fuck up the rest of that steering wheel. Pay attention to me, you bastard. It is a two! All right, bring it. The bear will attack you. You you finally drew its attention. Uh, natural one. Let's see if it hurts itself. Nope. It does not. Does a 17 hit? Uh, uh no. All right. Okay. The bear roars and slaps at you as ineffectually as you have slapped at it. <laughs> and that's there why was slapping to be done today. And we're all down here. What's all right. more slapping to be done? <laughs> Klaus? Uh, all right, Klaus will dip another arrow in oil and shoot the bear. All right. Shoot the bear. Shoot the bear. Klaus rolls a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in this well, situation. Well. Give me, give me a, let's do a 20 span. Let's see if you may. Uh, you, uh, hit, okay. you might hit Bjorg. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it easy. One through twenty. All right. And, and D one hundred. Here we go. Sixty-two. Uh, Bjorg, an arrow whizzes by your face and plants in the deck. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Like, you saw <laughs> the feathers on it. It was close. Oily Klaus, feathers. Klaus, have you been killing geese again? <laughs> Kutherick, it is your turn. You have just been violently ejected from the remains of a sea bear. But uh, you didn't take any damage, so that's a good thing. So we've got one bear left. I guess I'm going to... Uh, ah, shit, do I want to attack this thing? What? No, I'm gonna try to heal. Uh, I'm gonna do a cure light wounds on uh, Brandon, I guess, if he's still next to me there. He Wait. is very next to you and still very injured. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Kuthark, it's a seven. Seven points of damage back to Brandon Thymaster. Woo! That's some oh, healing right there. Back at Twelve. The a- the ab- I shine was useful. <laughs> I did something worthwhile. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a special moment. I like this. <laughs> All right, Brandon. Just just saying that he's touching you. You are up. Uh, I you are. I continue to touch Brandon. Even Stop after touching. <laughs> Brandon, you have a dwarf that has just healed you, but it's still a little Slightly. clingily uh, hanging on. Uh, but you do feel much Slightly better. <laughs> feel much better. I realize the dwarf is still touching me. I'm going to just run like towards the bear. Field. I'm going to run towards the bear, but more importantly, away from the dwarf. <laughs> What's your, uh, what's your current speed about. is about? My current, I'm still just, uh, normal base speed for a medium guy, so it'll be about 30 feet, I guess. Alright, well, I let Bjorn do it, so I'll let you do it. You can get a wobbly charge up the steps and get one attack on the bear. Cool. Brandon, come and join me! We can kill this bear and take a bath in its skin! That's a superb idea. An insane but superb idea. Excellent. <laughs> Do my friends want to play the 
bear butthole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh... Just wait, just, wait till, just wait till we start smoking them. <laughs> or vaping them, I suppose. Bruce drop. Bear vapory. Vaping bear butthole. Fred of 5 master rolls a 16. Uh, 16 rolls. will hit! Roll damage. Five damage. Five damage. Well, Five. it's not an insta-kill, uh, nor is it a complete devastation, but you and the good bristles did some good work, and you have weakened the bear visibly. Fandingo the Fantastic. Fandingo is going to come out of the bridge of while my guitar gently weaves into the opening chords of Let's Go Crazy, and he's going to inspire courage in his allies. He is dearly beloved. We are gathered here together to get through this thing called life. And what is, uh, what does <laughs> that actually I, do? I think Dorn's already there. And kill sea bears. <laughs> and kill sea bears. And kill sea bears. So, all you guys have to be able to do is hear me. And all trust me, you can hear me. <laughs> so, what does it do? That gives, it gives a <laughs> plus one morale bonus. It gives a plus one competence bonus on attack and on damage. And that's it. But it gives a plus one on attack and damage. That's good. It's got a beat. And, you know, it's an electric cord life. It means forever. That's a mighty long time. But I'm excited to something else. Well, Silas, you are feeling extra courageous as you have slain a mighty bear and have barred noise singing in your ear. Oh, what would you like to do? Plus one comp- well, I'm pretty sure plus one competence bonus isn't going isn't to help Silas. <laughs> so uh, he's actually going to walk over to his... Uh, his friend the dwarf and uh, do a lay on hands. His, his eyes glazing over slightly as he as he remembers uh his, his night with the whore. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, there's more uncomfortable touching. And he, he heals he heals Kutharic uncomfortably for four four points. Uh, Kutharic karma swings around very quickly as after your lingering touch on Brandon's abs. <laughs> Silas comes over, puts his hands on you, and very clearly has a half boner. So, <laughs> not, I did not foresee this uh, coming That's back. Not, just it's not this quite this way, dwarf <laughs> man tits. But but it, Silas and his part chub do uh, do heal you for four. So that is something. Both well, Torig and Little Torig are smiling upon you. <laughs> my, my beard's coming. If Little Torag looks like he's going to vomit, you should duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, Bjorg. Life it is your back. turn. <laughs> right. Redeem yourself, barbarian. <laughs> Brandon's stealing uh, all your it's glory time on for this some one. Bear conditioning! <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Your rolls a 14. Oh, man, that misses. Oh. <laughs> it's just Even barely. It's like plus one. Uh, oh, you do? That. Wait, wait. You get a plus one on attack? He gets plus one because my because my song. Oh, that, was, that would bump it up to a fifteen, I think. And that will yeah. hit. So Bjorg uh, begins oh, to yes. riff, and then Holy hears shit. the instrumental magic. That Fandingo is cranking the power out. Of the purple one, motherfuckers. And and he digs deep I'm and he spinning. he pushes a little harder and he beats that bear's dodge and he just cracks the shit out of it and it is all dead. Wow. It is sprayed across the deck, dead. Klaus, you catch a little up in the that rafters. George is going to throw himself down. Was that massive? I am bathing in your ruin. <laughs> oh. I wanted to test my oil theory. <laughs> Uh, looks like this is, this is the test oil. And uh, from from up uh, upon the deck appears the the slightly wobbly form of Cap'n, who uh, who hears Clef's mumbling and says, "Don't worry, there there are always more sea bears. The ocean is, is ripe with them. Ever since that blasted wizard set his curse upon it, uh, Jamel and his sea wait, bears." Wait, wait, wait. Go vomit over the deck again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Do not listen to the chicken shit in the crow's nest. And, uh, or the crow in the chicken's the nest. Ocean. Or whatever. And then uh, Captain notices Captain notices the, the fucked up steering wheel. Oh, you you didn't see fit to perhaps defend the old uh, 
thing we used to steer the ship, did you? I did. Yorg we said. figured you had, if you had magic sails, you probably had a magic steering wheel lying around somewhere, so we didn't we didn't spend too much time on that. What's that? Who's ever magic? heard of a magic steering wheel? You fucking yeah, right. magic sails are, are all over. They're all the rage, but uh, they, they haven't mastered the magic steering wheel yet. No. We we saw fit to defend the ship, and well, he defends yeah. from inside the ship. Of well, I'll give you bubble. that. Sort of. So he comes over and he examines. I've never seen the inside of a sea bear. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not pretty. All right, the the captain will will come over and uh, he examines the the busted ass uh, remains of his steering wheel, and then he he motions for you all to come gather around him. All right, I will. I'll swing down from my <coughs> from my rope and and your grab your hook, rise. Batman <laughs> style. <laughs> Yorg will rise dripping, stand next to dripping Brendan. Um, he's the only one dripping from awesomeness, not from getting stuck inside of a bear. The Lord of Silas is standing on me. I'm bathing in skins. Water can skins. I, can I pull one of my... Can I retrieve one of my oil arrows and slap it around in some sea bear remains and see if I can tell anything? Uh, yeah, you can tell that you're <laughs> stirring, uh, the remains of water that someone spilled on the deck with an oil. Or with an yeah, arrow. This, this would have fucking worked. You can also tell that your <laughs> friends are losing respect for you by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, nothing to lose. Bar was already pretty low. <laughs> I, uh, alright. I'm scientific method, man. You guys, you'll learn this eventually. So. Is there a level of respect? For him, is it down to the level of the respect that they have for Cathark yet, or is he still at the bottom? Uh, yeah, respect for Cathark. <laughs> <laughs> Silas is at the Remember, bottom. We have oh, Silas. that's right. Silas is at the bottom. Yeah. That, that's really Silas's place in this bar. <laughs> okay. Um, Alright. So Captain's gonna pat the remains of the steering wheel. You all did not do a very good job. This is, uh, bad, shall we say. Uh, as as very very not good. Uh, you you maintained the base mechanism, which, which is something I can I can use that. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to just be pretty much going straight and trying to catch the wind, and it would be a very very tough. But the fact remains that if we're getting anywhere out here, we have to be able to steer to avoid the frequent monsters that appear or the freak storms that blow up. We can't, we won't last very long without any sort of steering effort. So, because you were able to save at least part of it, I can navigate us a touch. We have three islands that are coming up close. We're going to have to set sail for one of them, and you are going to have to go get me materials to build a new steering wheel. Uh, on which island has the most trees? How much of a steering wheel can you make from a goblin? <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Like everything they do, even their bones are piss poor at a job. Maybe we're not being optimistic enough here. Does any of the islands have a uh, general store? (laughs) (laughs) We don't need to buy a general. (laughs) (laughs) This sounds like one of those like farming MMO RPG missions where you're like, we need to build a steering wheel. You need to go fetch. Forty-five werewolf, were- <laughs> werewolf teeth, and then you keep fighting werewolves that don't have any teeth. <laughs> uh, we're on an entire ship made of wood. Are you tell me you don't have a couple spare planks. <laughs> I think they might want us to walk on those later. <laughs> I want to see the steering wheel made out of werewolf teeth because that would be that would be pretty <laughs> badass. Captain <laughs> Patsy goes, "It's Listen, perfect." Steering a ship with enchanted sails takes a very particular type of wood. Now, it's not especially rare, but we also don't have any on board, because it's cheap. And I don't pay for things I don't have. So, there are three islands coming up. I'll let you pick which one we head to, since you're the one who have to get me more supplies. There's an island of... Well, let's go to the island with the wood on it. Yeah, they all have that. <laughs> There's an island of renowned beauty. Beautiful creatures, beautiful sights. It's so entrancing that most people who go there... Never have the fortitude to return, although occasionally we see bones along the beach, so apparently Let's something. Let's go that one. <laughs> I could get wood in that aisle. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Damn it. Nice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry. After that, 
is a yeah. very strange island. Curious beasts walk it. Things uh, unlike we've ever really seen. It's odd. There more than one mage has gone out to try and tame and uh, explore it, and uh, uh, they'll sometimes come back. Though there's there's very little magic there worth finding, so it's generally left alone. The creatures there are quite savage, but uh, they 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 lack any particular strategy or tactics when he sees in the more organized monsters. So, you know, there's that. Let, let's go oh, and let Brandon money. punch them all. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to say, are, are these new no. on the list, or are these animals that have yet to be punched in the name of those? <laughs> <laughs> and last, there is so a, no money. Uh, an island that was once home to a very, uh, let's say, temperamental people. Oh, temperamental. <laughs> There's quite uh, a bit uh, there, actually. Uh, 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 always strange things appearing. Sometimes they have value, sometimes they don't. But uh, the, the danger is always hard to predict there. You might catch it on a good day and it's just a deserted island. You might catch it on a bad day and there are malevolent forces. Uh, it's it's have sort you, of a, sort of a coin toss. So, uh, well, who exactly is it a temple to? We don't know. It's an old, old god, and truthfully, the temple's not there anymore. It's all abandoned. It's just residual magic lingering upon the land. Torig is pretty old. If it, if, and, and if it's abandoned, I can see it being for Torig. <laughs> yeah. I think the important question is, is who is the temple about to be uh, to? Uh, <laughs> not many temples to dwarven gods uh, on so islands. So oh, yeah. there's a temple. So there's an <laughs> island of monsters. There's an island of good looking things. Island of yeah. strange yeah. monsters. Island of beauty, and an island of residual uh, magic that's unpredictable. Magic and money. I'm oh. going for that. Oh, he, he'll he'll tell you very clearly. Well, oh, there, oh, be, there are things worth okay taking on island. every island. There's a reason there's so many ships that frequent this area. Everything has rewards. There are fruits on the Island of Beauty that sell for a high penny. The skins of those mysterious beasts is uh, not without value. Of course, the temple is, well, you know, it, weird stuff. We don't do very well with skinning things. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you think you are excellent skinners. I'll, I'll show you how to skin a sea bear. <laughs> are there any, are there any wells on any of one. these islands? Are there? Can say? We don't do so good with wells. I do fantastic wells, given a chance. Uh, I was going to say, uh, we'll probably be alright on the Island of Beauty, because by now you guys are probably all uh, inoculated, I guess, <laughs> from hanging around with them. <laughs> I don't know, that dwarf is touching you a lot. Yeah, I would like to sidle up besides bringing him while we're having this discussion and try to touch him some more. <laughs> hey, bro, you look like you need to So engages a... a... <laughs> you're just, uh, you're just frowns at a uh, guitar. Just lightly. Just going to touch him just, just a little bit so he doesn't... Hopefully he doesn't uh, notice. Is there something I should roll? I can I can roll for that. <laughs> a stealth check to see. So I'm just doing a stealth. <laughs> roll stealth me that stealth right. check, and uh, okay. everyone else roll me perceptions. <laughs> can we Let's choose see. to fail? <laughs> if only. Or you got you got to roll a denial check then. Uh, right, he's also the god of alternate lifestyles. <laughs> it's Silas with a natural twenty. Your girl's a five. Right, so. Fine, Master rolls a twenty. <laughs> Fandango rolls a nine. Oh, also rolls a nine. Dark uh, rolls a seventeen on a on a stealth. Uh, so it looks like. Oh, so it looks like uh, the only people who notice the the gentle uh, caress that runs across Brandon Thighmaster's back by Kutherick's dwarven hand are Brandon Thighmaster himself and Silas, who happens to look over at exactly the right moment to see <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> The one time you roll high, it's just feeling me up. Exactly. <laughs> 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 roll. So I found the one, good thing, one thing I'm good at. <laughs> he critted his caress. Brandon right. sidles uh, far away, as far away as he can. <laughs> just sidles in a circle. For, his phone <laughs> for the rest of the conversation. <laughs> Alright, um... Klaus says, I vote for the Isle of Magical Wonders, then shoots his crossbow back up to the crow. By that, do you mean the so beauty one or the should... weird temple one? Which one was the... Was... 
shit. Which one was the one with the, all, all the magical weirdness? <laughs> Too late, he's in the Christ <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, well, well class, class of the Isle of Wonder there. with no clarification and then fucked off again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Silas, of course, votes. We go in, uh, and, uh, consecrate the new, uh, the new Temple of Torag. <laughs> How did you come up with a whole new definition for consecrating after last night? Because <laughs> really, Silas, let's not do that in the temple. It's 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 That's a, what it's, piss it's, off a the it's, God. it's a squishy form of uh, consecration. <laughs> Fuck, I'm good for the temple. <laughs> Brandon That's doesn't make a vote. He's still sidling and looking at Kufrit in, in a vaguely disturbed way. That's all the votes we've got. Kufrit is distracted by Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> One of them's busy listening, one of them's busy chasing, and then anyway, it's like three to one for the other guy, so. Uh, Bjorg, uh, so Bjorg like considers and scratches his great beard between his, between his fingers, thinks for a moment and goes, I would be amenable to either beauty or beasts. Yeah, well, you're fucked, we're going to the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Well, so far there are two votes for the Temple Island. Uh, Klaus's could be interpreted as beauty or temple, depending on who wants to seize upon that. And Brandon and Kutherick are in a weird dance right now. So, uh, <laughs> I gotta tell you, there's no definitive winner yet. <laughs> sure there is. We've got two votes for temple. And Fine. You have, the temple it is if you want. You have possibly ah, one for beauty. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, Captain, Captain nods his head. The temple. The temple. All right then. Not expecting you to want to die that bad, but uh, whatever. And gentlemen, you have uh, the next day to rest, unless we draw more attacks from sea bears. Anyone who can hold their stomach should hold their stomach. And that's how long it will take us to arrive at the island of what was once a majestic, might have been good, might have been evil, really don't know, don't care, temple. And now is just a site of a lot of weird residual magic shit. So, everyone get some rest, drink up. You've all... Silas tries uh, to convert the sailors. And he actually stops. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Only two of you earned ale. Hmm? And he, he nods hmm? to Silas and uh and Bjorg. And he said... That's harsh. That's harsh. You were both successful in killing. Five days. So you are successful in drinking. Congratulations. Enjoy it with dinner with the captain compliments. And please try not to die on the island. We really do need this steering. And uh, is there is there a way to make Jerry wants to know if there's a way to make fire so that we can inhale the vapory of our enemies? <laughs> they are put, put them in been, a pot and cook them. You observed their their misty misty essence when you sprayed them into the air, and uh, you all do feel that <clears> night <throat> when you rest and wake up stronger, tougher. The sea bear hardship has has strengthened you to the core. And you are all now level three! Oh! Yeah. Woo. Da, da, da. Sweet. And you are gonna need it. This is good. <laughs> I have a feeling we would need it no matter where we went. It's really odd, because we've been hanging around with Silas for a while now, and we didn't automatically pick the island that he didn't pick. Yeah. It seems very oh, I'm sorry. Uh Fandingo, you are level two. The rest is level three. Yeah, I figured. And with that... Uh, I think that is as good a place as we are going to find to uh, call the game portion for tonight. Obviously, next game we will pick up with the Island of Weird Magic shit. But for now, it is time for our question and answer session. Remember, we do run a live vlog during these games at facebook.com slash authorsanddragons. There's no ampersand. You don't do that. You just have to type it out. Joe, uh, since right, you've been, uh, right, you're our primary live blogger, why don't you take it away with the first one? All right, our first one, uh, first question is from John, and uh, he said, uh, can you guys tell us about the event in New Orleans? Oh, absolutely. So that is an event called ContraFlow. It is a uh, sci-fi and fantasy convention in New Orleans. It is uh, at, oh man, I actually have to look up the convention center real quick, but I know it is the, it starts on September 30th, which is a Friday, and it runs through October 2nd, which is a Sunday. Um, so far, those in attendance will be myself, Robert Bevan, Robert Cruzy, John Hartness, and Rip Gilterry. Neither Joseph nor Steve are coming, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm not able to make it. Uh, unless someone can give me a list in English. <laughs> I, I got you. <laughs> hop, in, hop in my Hyundai, bro. I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, we don't yet know how many or what panels or anything we're going to be on. It is still a little bit laid out. 
Um, I believe we all will are committed to three. At least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'll all yeah. be doing at least three. Um, we'd really like to do one together. Whether that happens or not is yeah. largely up to the organizer. We don't, um, you know, we don't get to determine that. This is not our house. We are guests. So, uh, oh, oh, it is at, it is uh, at the don't... New Orleans Airport Hilton is where it's being held, right by the, uh, right by the airport. And I know from personal experience, don't... it's about 15 minutes from Bourbon Street downtown. Don't forget, we'll have, we'll have tables there so, so we can Bring hunk money. our shit and sign things for people. And we'll I find am... anything that's not too wet to write on. My, uh, I, uh, on a personal note, I am hoping to have advanced copies of the third Sword Spells and Stealth book before they are actually released as a special treat for those who come out and see us. So, uh, that'll be something you can only buy in advance. Huh? Wow. So you just released the second one. October. I, I'm trying to do them every October. Man, you're, you're rocking. I do Fred's in Summer and, uh, Sword Spells and Stealth in October. Well done. Thank you, sir. All right, does anybody have anything they want to add? I happen to have looked at all that today. That's why I knew all the information offhand. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to add that I missed for that? Are we, we going to do that one drinking night? Yes. Well, No, we're going to do every drinking night. <laughs> what, we, what, what, what is this? What are we talking about? We are going to, uh, the guys have agreed to do a one of my live drinking power hours um, that we're going to record. Uh, I don't know if that will be a public event where we're going to do that. Probably that will be an unofficial thing. I don't think the con can endorse power hours, which are by definition binge drinking. Um, but if we can find a way to include anyone who wants to come, we absolutely will. But if not, you will definitely get to see a video of us doing a live power hour um, within a week or two of us finishing. Did I agree to that? You did. <laughs> yep. I, 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 sure, perhaps I you were doing a live power that. hour when we were talking about it. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> or what? Uh, no, it's drink along. Uh, I call so them drink along power hours. That's what I reference it as. I don't know our uh, our second our second question is from Tim. Uh, it says, "How did the how did the idea for this podcast come about? Was it a screw it, let's do it moment, or was there some planning ahead?" Uh, he also wishes us to know that Brandon Bymaster is his new favorite monk. Hey. Oh, I, I actually know too. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, well, what was it, Drew? I was saying, like, oh, I wish I had a gamer group or, or something, and, and you said, yeah, well, I play online, and yada, 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 and I said, well, that's interesting. Wouldn't it be neat if we played online? Did, did it go like that? Or am I rem- remembering no, this correctly? No, you got it pretty much flat on. It was, uh, I remember this because yeah. it was the day of Superpowers Year 3 release. Um, because I was, all, I'm usually not on the messenger that much, but I was that day for, um, doing all the release day stuff. And I was also kind of drunk. Um, and so I was just like, yeah, I love gaming. Like I was, I was very like in a ch- chatty, man, it would be really cool if mood. And you were like, oh no, that would be really cool. And then we just sort of in the, in the way of discussing like the things we wished we could do, um, we formed the idea of, well, what if we did an online gaming group and recorded it? And then that became, well, what if we did one with a bunch of other fantasy authors? That would probably be really funny and enjoyable for people to listen to. And from there, it just I was a just lonely. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, it just became a discussion of, well, who do you know who might be into that? And the end results are as you see them. Basically, we reached out. I was out randomly to... approached by Rick. Yeah, Rick called me, and I was like, sure, fuck it. We started reaching out to people, and it it all sort of went from there. I was drafted in to fill in for John, and they've been super polite to ask me to leave since he came back. So <laughs> <that's why. laughs> you, you've been the star. <laughs> I know, right? It's like I—I I don't think we're kicking yeah, Brandon Thigh back. Just for so crap, he came back. <laughs> just to say, I don't know much about Pathfinder, but I know enough that uh, favorite monk isn't much of an accolade. So. <laughs> but, but thanks anyway. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. We'll keep it to three for tonight, because we had a pretty long game. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, this one's from our friend Travis, and it's, uh, what would your group name be, and what are uh, what are some of the group names that stick out for you from past groups? Uh, I'm going to assume that he's talking, like, a, gr- a name for your group of adventurers. I don't I think I've ever had a name for a group of adventurers. Ditto. Yeah, no. I mean, suggest- fuck yeah. but... But I'm going to go with Klaus Richter and the Klausettes. 
he suggests one that is uh, Tor- was it Torag's Unworthy Six. I think that's pretty cool. I kind of like that one. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking maybe Brandon's Six Pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's good. I like that one. Uh, let's see. I've been calling you guys the shit show in every intro for like the past ten episodes. <laughs> 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 That's more of a nickname. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, you know, and we're, we're also known far and wide in Keldern as a special needs company for heroes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yes. You guys are going to come back. There's going to be like a mute bard and a monk with one leg. Hey, we found these guys. We thought you could uh, take two more on. <laughs> I, I think it's more, I think it's more like they're gonna be like, they're gonna be like we come back and they're like God damn it they didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> How True. are we still alive? Uh, yeah, that's the name of this group, and that is also the uh, lead-in for these podcasts. Uh, Thrifter is the answer. <laughs> Uh, All right, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We will be back in two weeks with another episode. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to the original creators, which is us, the people who are playing it. The opening music, Take a Chance, and closing theme, Master of the Feast, are both credited to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and also used under a Creative Commons license.